That night, Philemon stood beside me and drew near and lined the walls and cried out, we, not, we want to know about God. Where is God? Is God dead? But Philemon rose and said, And this is the second sermon of the dead. God is not dead. He is as alive as ever. God is creation, for he is something definite, and therefore differentiated from the pleroma. God is a quality of the pleroma, and everything I have said about creation also applies to him. But he is distinct from creation in that he is much more indefinite and indeterminable. He is less differentiated than creation, since the ground of his essence is effective fullness. Only in so far as he is definite and differentiated is he creation, and as such he is the manifestation of the effective fullness of the pleroma. Everything that we do not differentiate falls into the pleroma and is cancelled out by its opposite. If, therefore, we do not differentiate God, effective fullness is cancelled out for us. Moreover, God is the pleroma itself, just as each smallest point in the created and uncreated is the pleroma itself. Effectiveness, effective emptiness is the essence of the devil. God and the devil are the first manifestations of nothingness, which we call the pleroma. It makes no difference whether the pleroma exists or not, since it cancels itself out completely. Not so creation. Insofar as God and the devil are created beings, they do not cancel each other out, but stand... Insofar as God and the devil are created beings, they do not cancel each other out, but stand one against the other as effective opposites. We need no proof of their existence. It is enough that we have to keep speaking about them. Even if both were not, creation would forever distinguish them anew out of the pleroma on account of their distinct essences. Everything that differentiation takes out of the pleroma is a pair of opposites. Therefore, the devil always belongs to God. This inseparability is most intimate, and if you knew from ex and if and as you know from experience, as indissolvable in your life as the pleroma itself, since both stand very close to the pleroma in which all opposites are cancelled out and united. Fullness and emptiness, generation and destruction are what distinguish God and the devil. Effectiveness is common to both. Effectiveness joins them. Effectiveness, therefore, stands above both and is a god above God, since it unites fullness and emptiness through its effectuality. This is a god you knew nothing about, because mankind forgot him. We call him by his name Abraxas. He is even more indefinite than God and the devil. To distinguish him from God, we call God Helios, or Son. Abraxas is effect. Nothing stands opposed to him but the ineffective. Hence, his effective nature unfolds itself freely. The ineffective neither exists nor resists. Abraxas stands above the Son and above the devil. He is improbable probability, that which takes unreal effect. If the Pleroma had an essence, Abraxas would be its manifestation. He is the effectual itself, not any particular effect, but effect in general. He takes unreal effect because he has no definite effect. He is also creation since he is distinct from the pleroma. The sun has a definite effect and so does the devil. Therefore they appear to us more effective than the indefinite Abraxas. He is force, duration, change. The dead now raised a great tumult, for they were Christians. But when Philemon had ended his speech, one after another did the dead stepped back into the darkness once more, and the noise of their outrage gradually died away in the distance. When all the clamor had passed, I turned to Philemon and exclaimed, Pity us, wisest one. You take from men the gods who they could pray. You take alms from the beggar, bread from the hungry, fire from the freezing. Philemon answered and said, My son, these dead had to reject the belief of the Christians, and therefore they can pray to no god. So should I teach them a god in whom they can believe and in whom they can pray? That is precisely what they have rejected. Why do they reject it? They had to reject it because they could not do otherwise. And why did they have no other choice? Because the world, without these men knowing it, entered into the month of the great year where one should believe only what one knows. That is difficult enough but it is also a remedy for the long sickness that arose from the fact that one believed what one did not know. I teach them a God whom both I and they know of without being aware of him, 
a God in whom one does not believe, and in whom one does not pray, but of whom one knows. I teach this God to the dead, since they desired entry and teaching, but I do not teach him to the living men, since they do not desire my teaching. Why indeed should I teach them? Therefore I take away from them no kindly hearer of prayers, their Father in heaven. What concern is my, what concern is my foolishness to the living? The dead need salvation, since they are a great waiting flock hovering over their graves, and long for the knowledge that, and that belief and the rejection of belief have breathed their last. But whoever has fallen ear, ill and is near death wants knowledge, and he sacrifices pardon. It appears, I replied, as if you teach a terrible and dreadful God beyond measure, to whom good and evil and human suffering and joy are nothing. My son, said Philemon, did you not see that these dead had a God of love and rejected him? Should I teach them a loving God? They had to reject him after already having long since rejected the evil God whom they called the devil. Therefore they must know a God to whom everything created is nothing, because he himself is the creator and everything created and the destruction of everything created. Have they not rejected a God who is a father, a lover, good and beautiful, one whom they thought to have particular qualities and particular being? Therefore I must teach a God to whom nothing can be attributed, who has all qualities and therefore none, because only I and they can know such a God. But how, O oh Father, can men unite in such a God? Does the knowledge of such a God not amount to destroying human bonds and every society based on the good and the beautiful? Philemon answered, These dead rejected the God of love, and the good and the beautiful. They had to reject him, and so they rejected unity and community in love, in the good and the beautiful. And thus they killed one another and dissolved the community of men. Should I teach them the God who united them in love and whom they rejected? Therefore I teach them the God who dissolves unity, who blasts everything human, who, powerful cur who powerfully creates and mightily destroys. Those whom love does not unite, fear compels. And as Philemon spoke these words, he bent down swiftly to the ground and touched it with his hand and disappeared. <laughs>